Over the years, I've interviewed a lot of people. I've interviewed a few prime ministers, members of parliament, uh, 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 lieutenant governor. But I think this is the first time I'm interviewing a mayor. His Worship Peter Fassbender from Langley, B.C. Welcome, Peter. Thank you, Jim. Or should I call you Your Worship? Uh, no. I, I still have trouble getting my head around that term. Yeah, kind of like me being called Reverend. I have a hard time yeah. being called that. But does your wife call you uh, Your Worship? <laughs> no. No. Uh, she did once. Once. The first time I was elected mayor, I yeah. had told her the uh, during the day, I said, you know, if I get elected tonight, you're going to have to call me Your Worship. And <laughs> she looked at me and just smiled. And mm -hmm. that night when we got home after the election mm -hmm. and I was successful, she put her arms around me and she said, I love you, Your Worship. And that's the first and the last time you'll hear <laughs> that from me. <laughs> it's good to have a good wife, huh? Yes, it is. I'm so blessed. Now, uh, there is this old adage out there, Peter, that all politics is local. Uh, is that true? Absolutely. I mean, no matter what level of politics you're in, uh, you, you eventually come back to the people who elected you. I think the difference between federal or provincial politicians is they very often are removed from their communities because they're doing their work in Ottawa or in the uh, provincial capital that they happen to be in. And, in my case, of course, I live in the community and I'm there every day. I walk the streets of my community. So I'm very much in touch with the people who I serve as, as the mayor. So it really comes down to that relationship that I have with them that's ultimately important. Uh, tell me about your career in politics. Um, it goes back a ways. Uh, it does. Give us a little history. Well, I was uh, a member of the school board in Langley back in the late 70s. Um, I, uh, we didn't have children in school when I decided to run for the school board, but I had real concerns about uh, what was happening in our school system. And uh, of course, at that time, I wasn't a believer, so my paradigm was based on what I saw around me and and I just had this strong urge that uh, I wanted to get involved and make a difference. So I um, was approached by some people to run for the school board. I was elected. And uh, coming up to my second term is when actually I made my decision for Christ, uh, just before the election campaign. And, and God proved to me right out of the chute that he has a, a great sense of humor <laughs> because um, the day after I gave my heart to Christ, uh, a lady phoned me and said, well, you know what people are saying? And I said, no, what are they saying? And she said, well, you uh, went to the biggest church in the community because the election's coming up and you're looking for votes. And uh, I got a little angry actually and ended the conversation. And then it was the first time in my very early walk, this was the Monday after the Sunday when I had made mm -hmm. my decision, um, God spoke to me and he said, a um, couple of months ago, what would you have said about most politicians who go to church? Mm -hmm. I said, well, they're there to get votes. Mm -hmm. So I phoned her back and I said, you know, I want to apologize for my reaction to your comment, but uh, I know what's happened in my heart and in my life, and um, it doesn't really matter what people think. It's, that's not important in this particular case. While in politics, it's always important what the voters think, but in this particular case, my decision was made because of what it meant to me and my wife and, and uh, how it changed my heart almost instantaneously. So. What was it about, um, were you in a church service when you committed your life to the mm -hmm. Lord? What was it about that service that was so convincing and convicting for you? Well, it wasn't just the service. It was um, the journey for a few weeks before that. I had been invited to a business lunch by a gentleman that I had uh, a relationship with, and I didn't realize it was a full gospel businessman's right. lunch. And, right. and I heard a testimony there and uh, went home that night and started to talk to Charlene, my wife. And uh, she started crying and she said to me, you know, I've been wondering about what happens when we leave this world and uh, our children are asking, or especially our oldest son, was asking a lot of questions. And for the first time in the 11 years we had been married, we had talked, to, we started to talk about anything to do with spiritual matters. And so we said, you know, we, um, what are we going to do about it? If we've got questions, uh, where do we get the answers? So we decided to go to church that Sunday and uh, 
happened to be one of the larger churches because um, I had met the pastor at a number of civic events and he seemed rather normal. And I said to my wife, I said, you know, it's one of those non-denominational churches where you don't have to make any real commitment. So I said, well, why don't we go there? So we did. We walked in and, and I think the first thing that, that hit me, I know, it was just the, the atmosphere in the, the service. People were smiling. Um, I saw some people waving and I thought, well, who are they waving at? Uh, it's kind of, <laughs> kind of different that they're waving at the musicians and the pastor, but uh, I finally got the, the gist of what was going on. But it just, there was just an atmosphere and a spirit in there. And, and you know, uh, in looking back, I know that God was tugging on both our hearts yeah. and uh, we were just ready. How did the uh, mayoralty possibility enter the picture? Well, I stayed involved even after I stepped down from the school board. My business career uh, was, uh, was quite busy, and, uh, but I stayed involved in the community on various committees and things like that. And people kept saying to me, they felt that, you know, I had my head screwed on properly and um, that, you know, I should consider running for city council. And I did, and the first time I wasn't successful, and then the second time I was, so I was elected to council. And I really didn't have, you know, the uh, sort of the, the desire to become the mayor at that time, but the mayor who was in office, uh, once I was elected, she said to me, you know, you should really think about running for mayor because I've been waiting for you to get on council so I can step down. Hmm. So I, I prayed about it, talked about it, thought a lot about what it would mean, talked to Charlene. She wasn't sure, and I remember her saying to me, she said, you know, that might be your dream, but it's not mine. And I said to her, I said, well, you know, until you come to the place where you have a piece about me doing that, uh, I'm not going to make that final decision. And um, she had somebody come up to her a couple of weeks after we'd had that conversation uh, that she didn't know, and this lady said to her, you know, your husband should think about running for mayor and she came home but uh, when I got home that night she said so did you talk to anybody about our conversation I said no and she said well a woman came up to me and said that you know she felt that I should run for mayor and a number of other people had talked to me about it and uh, so I said so does that tell you that maybe God is in this and that's Ooh. what he wants for us? Because it's not just me, it's, it's the two of us. I mean, you don't do this alone. Now, um, some people are quite cynical when it comes to politicians, as you know. And they figure that every politician, and it often starts with a school board, uh, they see it as a stepping stone, mayoralty, whatever, to eventually becoming prime minister. I mean, they, 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 they see the politician on a career curve. Mm -hmm. um, is, is that fair or is that unfair? Well, I think it's fair in some cases. There are people who, you know, uh, get a political science degree and whose desire is to be in politics as their career. But if you then take the next step and say that because you are interested in serving your community, your province or your country, that that's a wrong motive. It would be like saying someone who wants to be a doctor, it's a wrong motive to, to serve people in that way. Um, in my case, I had, you know, when I was a teenager, I had said to my parents um, that one day I would be prime minister. <laughs> um, I have no desire to be the prime minister. <laughs> uh, I enjoy what I do as the mayor. Um, and each step in my life, whether it's been my business career or my career in civic, uh, service has been about making a difference in my community and in my circle. And I think that is what I see in most politicians. Uh, I'm not as cynical about yeah. politicians, maybe because I am one, but mm -hmm. I'm not cynical about their motivation because most of them truly do want to make a difference. Yeah. And you know, if circumstances and opportunities come where you can uh, move to the next level, as I did, I was a school trustee, but then I took almost 20 years off of civic life because my business took off. Mm. So um, it wasn't like I was stepping, uh, using it as a stepping stone. I made my contribution, I stepped back because I had other things I was doing. But then I felt a real urge, and especially, uh, you know, as, as a follower of Christ, uh, service is first. Mm. If that's not my heart attitude, no matter what I do, 
then I have the wrong attitude. And I, and I try and keep that in mind.